Now then, how are you doing? I hope you're well. You know, it never ceases to amaze me how even when surrounded by some of the finest landscape this country has to offer, it can sometimes be difficult to find just the right subject. Well, we recently spent a few days in Patterdale in the Lake District and despite the good weather and the fantastic views, for the first two days nothing seemed to jump out at me. Nothing said, paint me. Well, having said that, it is with an equal amount of amazement that some subjects manage to appear almost magically out of nowhere. Well, that very thing happened on this occasion and boy was I surprised and pleased slightly relieved with all those spectacular mountains, high tarns, dramatic crags and wild waterfalls. It was a humble barn that took my eye. But hey, what a barn. This is Ullswater, the second largest lake in the Lake District by both area and volume, at seven miles in length and 207 feet down at its deepest point. We've come to spend a few days in Patterdale with plans to climb a couple of fells and find something to paint. Of course, there's no shortage of painting material in these parts, with Helvellyn and Striding Edge to the west and Aeroforce on the shores of the lake, just north of Glenridding. Our main objective on this occasion, however, was to walk up to Angle Tarn and hopefully Hayeswater beyond. Conditions were looking promising, with good clear views as we climbed. There are never any guarantees when visiting the Lake District and the weather can swing one of two ways. Today it seemed we were going to be lucky. two angle tarns in the Lake District. This one sits at an altitude of 1,572 feet. Hayes Water, our second objective, seen here, is at 1,400 feet. Oh, we didn't make it that far, unfortunately. We were limited by a minor ankle injury and slowly headed downhill with a few good photos, but no sketches. It always bothers me a little when I'm enjoying great sights, but not feeling particularly inspired by anything artistically. We had a couple of days yet though, so I was still hopeful that something would catch my eye. Day two saw us taking a gentle meander up to Lamptey's Tarn, a relatively short climb above the back of Patterdale Hall. From here, Greasedale can be enjoyed in all its glory and the views across to St Sunday Crag and Helvellyn beyond were truly stunning. 
finally I got the urge to sit and make a sketch. For me though, the big break came on day three, when we opted for a low level hike along the eastern shore of Allswater. Accompanied by the roar of Air Force jets practicing overhead, we ate lunch overlooking Silver Bay and enjoyed an easy climb to a small promontory known as Silver Crag. The Lake District never fails to impress me with its expansive views and dramatic scenery, but the subject that really caught my imagination this time around was nothing more than a simple barn. The brightly coloured moss that covered its roof entirely had something of a hypnotising effect on me. Its position overlooking the lake and flanked by interesting trees really caught my imagination. Needless to say, this was something that I couldn't wait to paint. often asked, where do you start with a watercolour painting? Well, if in doubt, a wet in wet wash is good for laying down a basic loose foundation upon which the scene can then be built. I've established the sky and an impression of the foliage in this way, not only setting the mood, but also helping to break the ice. A blank sheet of paper can be quite daunting. I should add that there are many different ways to paint a tree. Here, my priority was to establish the basic shapes without overworking the details and making it look too cluttered. Another aim was to build in some graduations of colour and tone in order to keep it looking visually interesting and to help reinforce the all-important illusion of space and depth. For me, the star of the show was always going to be the moss that almost entirely covered the roof of the barn, so thick it was like snow. But a vibrant element such as this is nothing without the shadows of the tree falling across it. In watercolour, tone is relative, so for something to look light and bright, Adjacent objects need to be dark to create the necessary impact. In the end, it is that juxtaposition of values that makes a scene really pop. In watercolour, we work from light to dark, so it often isn't until the final, darkest tones are added that the composition really starts to come together.
Well, I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you'll agree with me that the roof on that barn made it all worthwhile. I can tell you I share these adventures because of those moments. If you're interested in viewing the full uncut non-time-lapsed watercolour demonstration complete with commentary and step-by-step -step notes then there are now two ways to go about it. If you sign up as a member of my YouTube channel, this YouTube channel, for only £8.99 a month, you'll get exclusive access to the full version of this and other videos, along with downloadable notes on how to paint it yourself. Or to sign up, simply hit the Join button below this video. Alternatively, a subscription to my online tuition service for only £9 a month will give you access to this and hundreds of other similar projects, complete with extensive notes and additional resources. There are several fully curated courses available along with an upgrade option if you're looking for private one-to-one -one tuition. Well, if you're new to my channel, where are my manners? Welcome. Please do hit the like button, share it with someone of like mind and maybe consider subscribing. It all really does make a difference. But until next time, take care.